G'day there, welcome to my garage and this is my garage NFT. In here at the moment, I've got a crop of assorted chilies, pak choy and basil. I also have a little pup propagator with some more basil and some coriander growing. And the plan this morning was to do some routine system maintenance, but when I walked into the garage, I noticed things were a bit quiet. I should be able to hear water flowing here and I can't, so I've come down to check the pump and it is not pumping. Now, I haven't been that impressed with this pump and my suspicions have turned out to be vindicated because it's died after about two months worth of runtime. Oh, the back just falls off. Well, look, I've plugged, unplugged it, I've pulled the guts out, I've put it back in and I still can't get it to work. So I've just come back from a run to Bunnings and I've picked up this little guy. Arguably it's a bit big for this size system, but the Bunnings I went to didn't have a great range to choose from. So that's the one we've ended up with. So I'm gonna switch that into there now and then we're gonna get into the more routine system maintenance. It was definitely working yesterday, so at least I know the plants haven't been dry for too long. But when I actually look up in the system here, and I probably can't see very well down in there, but when I feel down in there, those roots, those chili roots are actually quite dry. Okay, so the old pump's out and the new pump's in. Let's plug it in and listen for that sound. Ah, uh, that's what we want to hear. We get some water back onto those roots. So now that that crisis is averted, let's get back into the system update and I'll take you along with the maintenance that I'm going to do. It's now been two weeks since I put this second level on the NFT. The first level has actually been running for, oh, must be 10, 11, 12 weeks now. So first we're gonna focus on these chilies. Now, they're doing pretty well, but there are a couple of little things going on here that I wanna show you. We have flowers, so that's a bit exciting. And they all seem to be covered in a lot of little buds, so hopefully that's a good sign for the crop. Now, my understanding of chilies is that they are self-pollinating, so I shouldn't need to manually pollinate these. Um, well, that's what I read on Google anyway. Now, we're not without issues. A couple of the plants are getting these kind of curly leaves at the top. This kind of leaf deformation, and I'm not sure what's causing that. Is it because the light's too close? Yes, the plants have grown up. It wasn't originally that close, and I am going to lift it up this week. But is that something that could cause the leaves to do that? And noting that the leaves aren't doing that for all of them, but there are four varieties of chili in here and I don't know which is which because I've got them all mixed up and they were seeds. But if you've seen this kind of curling on chili leaves before, I'd love to hear your thoughts. At the moment, I've got the light on a 16 on, eight hour off cycle and it's dimmed to 80%. But now that we're starting flower, I'm gonna turn the power right up and I'll probably change that across to a 12 on, 12 off cycle just because that's what it says in the Spider Farmer manual. I really don't know what I'm doing here, so if you've got any thoughts about what the right light cycle is and how far above the plants it should be sitting, please let me know in the comments. Another issue I'm having is this little guy. This little guy was in the propagation system up until two weeks ago when I extended the system up. All the rest of these plants have actually been in the NFT for a lot longer. But this guy is not making the kind of progress that I would have expected after two weeks in this system. Now, I'm just gonna lift it out of there and we'll have a look at the roots. Now, some of those roots are looking a bit dark and it, look, it does look like some of the roots have been dying off a little bit. But I actually think that's looking a little bit better than it was last week. I think for now, I'm just gonna leave it in the system and see what happens over the course of the next week. Or is that a mistake? Am I risking contaminating my system with some kind of root-eating bacteria? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Now, I just use one of these analog PowerPoint timers that ha allows you to program in 15-minute increments. Now, I've just set that up for 12 on, 
12 off for these chilies, but what do you think? These down here are gonna stay on uh, 16, eight cycle, which means they're gonna be on at times that this one's off. Is that gonna cause a problem? Is the light pollution from underneath the chili is gonna interfere with that 12 on 12 off cycle? This is all something that I expect to find out in time. But certainly interested to hear any comments if anyone has any experience with that. And of course, because I'm using two different light cycles now, I need two separate timers. So I've just set that up. So that's pretty much it for the chili maintenance. Let's move down to level one. And you can see that pak choy there has bolted. It's flowering like anything. It was um, already starting last week and I just let it go. But this week we're gonna take that out of there and probably put in some of these new seedlings. These basil plants here are the only original plants left in the system from when I started about two months, two and a half months ago. Um, these bok choy or pak choy, I always get those two mixed up. I think those are pak choy. They are doing pretty well also, but I am seeing some signs of the end of the leaves drying out back there. I'm not sure what's causing that. I have had a little fan running on them all week, but maybe it's not getting enough air across there. I'm going to pull a few leaves off this week and hopefully open up a bit of space. So let's get that rail out of there so we can take those bok choy out. Just turn off the tap over here so I don't have to shut down the rest of the system. And I'll pop that rail out and we'll take it outside. Now, the roots that are trailing out down here have actually tangled with that other bok choy. So I'm actually just gonna cut. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. Oop, I've actually broken them off already. Let's grab this see how they've tangled with the trailing roots of that other bok choy i think i'm i'm just going to cut that off and you can see there i've actually just torn those roots off those bok choy that i'm about to be pulling out but that doesn't matter i want to keep these ones the fresh ones from the remaining bok choy as healthy as possible so i'm cutting those off and i'll just tuck those back into the system there now, I don't want any, any dead roots in my reservoir, so I've got to make sure I pull these all the way out so that they don't fall down into the res. I'm pulling them out gently. Now, these were hanging right down into the reservoir. I could see them sticking out and swimming around in the reservoir, but that Look at the length of those. Actually, I might roll the bench out here so I've got a more comfortable place to work. That's better. So this bit's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna cut these off at the stumps. So that should be a good serve or two of bok choy. But let's have a look at these roots in here. So I'll pull that up. Now, see those little fluffy roots in there? Those are the air roots. And then you've got the denser mat of roots that sits down in the nutrient solution. Now up here where the basil start, we've probably got a bit of entanglement of bok choy and basil roots. And it's important not to leave any dead roots in the system. So I'm actually gonna cut it off up here working on the basis that most of the bok choy roots would have been growing down with the flow of the water and hopefully that doesn't really leave any dead bok choy up here. Now the basil doesn't have the same kind of root system as the bok choy so cutting off a little bit of the basil roots shouldn't be too much of a problem. I've done it before and it didn't really seem to impact the plants too much. Now, when I look at this in here, it actually does look like most of the bok choy roots were growing down with the current. So I should just be able to cut it off in there. All right, so that's the bok choy cleaned out. I might actually just give this basil a bit of a prune as well. Right, now 
that is a pretty hard cutback. But you can see I've done hard cutbacks before on this basil and it does just come back. It might take a couple of weeks to come back this time. While I've got that first rail out, I'm going to strip a few of the leaves off this pack toy in here just to free up a bit of space in there. It's really crowded, um, so I'll open that up a bit. So as you can see, I've been fairly aggressive with my strip back there. And here's this week's harvest. I've got a mountain of bok choy. I reckon there's about three kilos there and a heap of basil as well. Looks like we're gonna be making some pesto. So now I'm just gonna pop this rail back in. And there we have it with things looking a little bit more anemic than they did when we started. But I'm gonna take some of these coriander seedlings and stick them in these four holes here. But my track record with coriander is not great. If you have a look back at some of my earlier videos, I was getting this kind of leaf dying in the middle of my corianders and I thought it was an airflow thing although I thought this one would have had enough airflow. Now these are younger seedlings here and they don't seem to be getting it yet although they have got a little bit of browning around the edges. I think that might be because the nutrient solution I've got in this tank might be a bit strong. I topped it up last week and I think I overdid it. But I'm going to put some of those into the big system now and we'll see how they're looking next week. And I'm even going to put this one with, that has that little leaf dieback phenomena going on. I'm, I'm going to put that in as well, but I might just break off those leaves. And we'll see how that goes as well. That one is a couple of weeks older than all of those other three. Now I do have these little basil seedlings over here in the propagation system but I'm running out of time. Uh, I don't have any space to put them until I cut some holes in the top of those two spare rails um, and I don't think I'm going to have time to do that this weekend. So we might just leave it there for now and we'll go ahead and do a res check and we'll top up the nutrients if we need to. Now when I open up the reservoir here what I see is that some of the roots from that bok choy have actually broken off and are floating around the reservoir. So I'm going to try and fish all of those out because we don't want any rotting vegetable matter in here. There's a few stragglers in there. Alright, hopefully there's not enough in there to really cause any issues. First I'm going to check the pH. And it's at 7.3. Now, a week ago, I adjusted it down to 5.5 or 7.2. Um, but what I've been finding consistently since I set the system up is that it does climb over the course of a week and it always ends up at around about the low sevens, which, funnily enough, is the way it comes out of the tap in my area. So really, it's just leveled off to about what it was when it came out of the tap. I will use some pH down to adjust that back down to the 5.5 to 6.5 range. Next, I'll check the EC. And we're at 1.9. Now that was actually 2.5 when I adjusted it last week. I usually go for about 2.4, but I ended up a little bit high. But what that tells me is that that bok choy and chili has been really consuming a lot of the nutrients. So I will also give the nutrients a bit of a top up as well, just to get that up to around 2.3, 2.4 if I can. So first I'll adjust my pH before I add any more nutrients. So I'm not very precise about this. I use phosphoric acid and I know from experience that around about 10 mils in this reservoir will take that down by about one-ish. But if it goes over, I'll add more water. And because my water comes out of the tap at about seven, I'll just keep adding water until it comes back up to the range I want. Now to help mix this up, I've got this short hose that I stick into the reservoir and then I open up this tap and close this one. And that just gets the water circulating within the reservoir. It's just good for mixing in the acid and also the nutrients when I add those. In with the acid. Right, so after that first dose, I actually ended up checking it and putting in about another 10 mil. And 
I've got it all, it's just a smidge low now. And when I add the nudes, it might come down even a little bit more. But I'm actually not too concerned about that because it does tend to drift up fairly quickly through the course of the week. So I am going to do a very slight nutrient top up now, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. I might save that for another one. So I've added in 84 mil of part A and part B. It's had time to mix around a bit. Let's see where we're at. 2.3, close enough for me. So that's the nutrient solution adjusted and we're pretty much done. That's a fairly typical maintenance routine for the garage NFT, a bit more involved perhaps than usual because we did have to make some changes to the light arrangement and we did swap out some old plants in for new plants. I am pretty excited about these chilies now that they're starting to flower. We'll see how they progress over the next couple of weeks and I'll keep you posted. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up. And if you're interested in the progress of these chilies, keep an eye out for my next updates. And if you're interested in learning more about the system, have a look at some of my older videos, the full system rundown and the second story build video. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Hydroponics.